I believe the year was 2014. I was in Los Angeles for an internship, and on my long list of things I wanted to do there was visiting uh, the Perfect Circuit store. I think it's in Burbank? Yeah, anyway, it's outside of Los Angeles. Uh, I went there and it was a really nice time. They had a ton of uh, synthesizers and drum machines, and uh, one thing that caught my eye was this pedal right here, which is the Eshi and Aka Tape T. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it, but I think that's close enough. Um, and I bought it mostly because I think it looks cool, but I plugged it in and I played with um, a drum machine in the store and I just thought this was a fun addition. Um, it's stayed with me since and I haven't used it a ton, but every time I take it out I feel like this is a really fun um, thing that adds a bit of flavor and a bit of uh, distinct character to anything I uh, plug through it. This video is about doing some sonic explorations uh, I'm using the Deluge mostly as a MIDI thing or a drum machine and then I have a, a StrikeFet string synthesizer which is fine. I'm just gonna set it to a pretty basic setting and then run it through here. Then I thought I can try with a couple of other instruments and see what it sounds like. Um, but before I get into the different like audio examples and I'll see if I can cut something interesting together. It's got a bunch of uh, mystery knobs and if you just tweak them around for long enough typically you find something that sounds nice. But I tried to actually learn it a little bit more uh, in depth so I could understand why certain things behave the way they do. I drew this schematic uh, which hopefully illustrates how it works and um, I'll go over it in greater detail. But it starts with the clean audio, the tape volume, and then we have the bypass of course here. This is a tap tempo that I've never really used but I'm sure it's useful. This um, star of the show is the pressure sensor and uh, pressing on it can generate really interesting sounds on its own and manipulate sounds really interestingly on its own too. These switches over here uh, affect the LFO1 and how it modulates the tremolo. Uh, this one is for the LFO number two and how that modulates the tremolo, so modulate the first or the second tremolo. Up here we have the LFO1 speed, the LFO1 wave, which I'm assuming is the shape. This is the LFO2 speed and LFO2 wave. Underneath we have the pitch mod depth. So the higher this is, the more it sort of warbles with uh, the pitch depth. On the side here we have LFO2 to LFO1 speed, so you can get them to affect each other. And um, if you flick it over, it's LFO2, LFO1 depth. Underneath you see little lights. One is indicating whether the pedal is on or off. And uh, on the either side you can see sort of which LFO is doing what. Underneath here you have uh, the three different settings for tape, burn tape, or fuzz. It's kind of like noisy, noisier, very, very noisy. This should have a little warning sign because when you flick it over to the uh, fuzz section it becomes very loud and just screaming. Um, so that's an overview of the pedals. I'm gonna play a simple chord progression on the Deluge which is sent to the strike fit by a MIDI then the audio from the strike fit is going into the tape T, which in turn is routed back as an audio signal into the deluge and then into my interface and into Ableton. I hope that wasn't too complicated. Um, but I need to plug in for this and uh, we'll take it from there. So turning this thing on, you can immediately hear that it's got a lot of noise. If I turn up the tape volume, you can hear and this is on the, the quiet setting. If I flick this to the burn tape, pretty loud. And then if I flick it to the uh, fuzz, then it just becomes like noisy, like really noisy. So uh, be a little bit careful with that one. And this is before any signal whatsoever is fed into it. I'm thinking that uh, you could probably use these crackles to create like a, a sampled drum set or something, but I already have uh, a basic one using uh, some of the samples that I had, so I'm not going to do that today. But I am going to play uh, just the strike fit and see what that sounds like, so I'm going to open my uh, MIDI controller, which sends the signal across, and it will sound like this. And then I'm just going to go in and sort of affect some of the, the switches and see how we can um, make the sound disintegrate a little bit more.
it's really beautiful, but it sounds very, even the, the basic setting uh, sounds really crackly and, and uh, distorted. Especially when you start to manipulate with the pressure sensor. Let's add a, a simple loop. I'm going to record that um, in the audio track I have. then we have something already. And uh, then I'm gonna disconnect this stuff and plug in my bass instead and see what that sounds like. I'm gonna add another audio track, set that to... Okay. I've added a four on the floor kick pattern, which uh, you can't hear it, but it does a little bit of um, audio ducking, uh, so like volume ducking, for uh, both the synth string channel and also a little bit for the bass channel. I am just going to turn this off, and I've set the settings so they sound cool to me. Everything is ready for recording here, and I'm going to record... Record something. Let's try it. adjust a couple of the levels but I think uh, we're onto something so let's see if I can add some uh, guitar to this too I have a couple of simple guitar chords let's uh, try recording them was the first channel, let's try recording a second one too. those hard left and hard right and see if I can set the, the audio the volume levels so they sound good together. Let's add a simple solo. Thank you. 
That works. Uh, let's see if we can add some just embellishments. I'm gonna add uh, me just plucking on two notes uh, because I think it will sound nice and especially if we add some reverb to it later and maybe some delay, it's gonna sound great. some uh, delay to that and maybe some reverb too. Let's um, let's add some percussion. I'm guessing that the the built-in microphone of the Synthstrom is probably better um, than this, especially because I'm not using like a preamp or anything, but uh, this is more fun. So let's, let's try this. I'm put that here and turn this on, add another channel. I think that does something. Let's record it. a little bit of tambourine for this one, I'm pretty sure. Let's try it. I don't really sing much, if at all, uh, but I thought maybe it could be worth singing something at this. There's like a slight delay. I think maybe there's a bit of a, a latency between what goes into this thing and what comes out of it. I'm not entirely sure, but um, let's, let's see what we can do. Okay, I'll record some uh, vocals. Don't judge me. that will need a little bit of a boost because I don't have the preamp so let's use the, the um, saturator instead. Take two. 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 Take two.
Okay, I'm gonna try to record something else which has a little bit of a longer note so you can see more of the quality of um, what it sounds like with vocals. This is uh, starting to take shape. I'm just gonna make a couple of quick adjustments, make sure it sounds good, and then turn it into more of a song structure. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I know I did. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Disintegration. Disintegration. Disintegration.